Are you ready for the next sew along? Let's sew shirts for our men. Simplicity 8753 starts today. Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to Friday Sewing School. I'm just delighted to see all my new subscribers. I love the comments. I love uh, going back and forth with you guys. Um, please keep it coming. It's just wonderful. And if you're not a subscriber yet, do please consider subscribing. Um, just click the little button below and ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I post a new video. All right, so today we're going to um, talk about what we need and gather our supplies for the men's shirt so long. That was a very close neck and neck race between the bathing suit and the men's shirt so long. The men's shirt just eked ahead by just a little bit. And um, so that is what we will be doing. Um, that doesn't mean we won't do a a bathing suit so long. Um, we will do that as well, but this is what we're going to do first. All right, so I want to answer a few questions from viewers first before we go on into this. Um, one question that I had was, how do I get my family's measurements to know that gifts will fit correctly? Well, I get sneaky in a few ways. Um, a lot of times, I'll just outright ask everybody in my family before Christmas, hey, you know I sew, I don't know if it'll be you, but let's measure your whole, like my daughter and her whole family, and my son and his whole family. Um, I do that kind of routinely. I have an app that um, is in the app store on Apple. It's yeah. called Dress Measurement, and um, I try to keep updated measurements of my family in there. Um, if I can't, or I'm sneaking and I can't like bring it into the conversation without giving it away, what I would do is sneak a piece of a garment or sneak a garment out of their closet and measure it. Um, or I'll ask, um, you know, like my daughter-in-law to get something of my son so I can measure it or um, vice versa. And that way um, I'm able to um, See the finished measurements. Now, if you do that though, you have to remember that you're looking at finished measurements when you do that. So you have to allow for ease. So you'll you'll want to come down from that um, to whatever the ease is for that pattern. So if you're using an existing garment for um, to measure, then what I would do is just um, look at the finished measurements of the pattern and choose that size accordingly. Or you can just ask. A lot of times I just ask um, and they don't know what I'm making and it's not really a secret that I sew for people. So um, yeah. Another thing that I have, I keep this notebook um, handy and what it is is just different things that I want to remember um, from workshops I've been to or um, just something interesting that I saw that I want to remember the technique of or uh, like I have my directions to my snap pliers in here, just different things. So one of the things that I have in here are the body measurement charts from Butterick for all the different sizes. They might also be available for some of the other companies, but this one happens to be Butterick, and it gives the uh, measurements for each size um, in inches. And um, so if somebody is a store size 18, you can kind of look at what the normal sizes are for an 18 and go from there. People are not phased by you asking their size. So if you ask for a woman size 18, and then you can look online and see um, what the ready to wear women's 18 measurements are. There, a lot of stores have them. JC is a good place to look. They ha have measurements um, on their site for their catalog ordering. So you can look at that and then choose a pattern accordingly. It's not you know, as good as measuring somebody, but it gets it pretty close. Um, if you're doing something like pants or, you know, something that is really involved or tailored, um, then you might want to just tell the person, hey, I need to measure you and um, I'm not going to tell you what for, but just I need to measure you. And usually um, people are happy to do that. 
Um, I also have in here a couple places online I found um, usual baby size measurements. So, because a lot of times, like the butter baby stuff will be like extra small. Well, what is that? Um, so I have the baby size chart. It compares um, different, like it's an average. It has like the percentile charts like the doctors have. And that's real helpful if you're sewing for a baby even that isn't born yet, or if your grandkids are out of town or something like that. I also have this list of children's stores and what the, um, what the sizes are based on the weight height and certain measurements. So um, there's like Carter's in here and uh, Old Navy's in here, Oshkosh, the different um, children's stores. And so that's helpful too when you're sewing for kids. Now, as far as men go, the first thing I did when, when I sewed for my husband is I just went in and picked a shirt that he wears all the time. And I measured that. But for that, I was only making a pullover. So I didn't need exact neck measurements and wrist measurements and all those things that you need for the shirt like we're about to do. The first one you make, I would suggest uh, being able to measure your husband and have it not be a surprise. Or you can take a chance and just measure one of his garments, um, one of his dress shirts that he likes and you know fits him well. You can also do that. So that is basically how I get measurements. I know that was a roundabout answer, but I thought I would answer it on camera. And just, you know, when you have things like that, if you find something interesting online or you go to a workshop, um, and you, this is a good place you could put the handouts that I have referenced in Friday Sewing School as well that I, over the weeks, we've accumulated four or five handouts that are downloadable for you. You know, and then you can just put them in a binder and keep them in your sewing room and refer to them as much as you need to. I have all the colors of Caesar vinyl um, available and uh, the Pantone fashion color report, just different things like that, different fit um, things that I've been to and, and um, that kind of thing. So it's a good way to keep track of references. So just an idea, but I really use this a lot. The next question was how to finish a seam if you don't have a serger on the PJs. The fabric that I have is a knit, so it wouldn't require any finishing at all. If I didn't have a serger, I most likely would just zigzag it close to the seam and trim it, and that would be that. When it comes to wovens, a few weeks ago I showed you, uh, I believe it was the finishing the skirt video, I showed you a product that I like to use. Before I had a serger, I used to use a lot of this. It's called Seams Great. It comes on a roll, and it basically just wraps around the seam, and then you can zigzag it and then close all the edges. Now, if you go to the final um, skirt video, I did this with the facings on the skirt. So you can see that demonstrated how that's done. And that's how I used to finish things before I had a serger. All right, I think that was all the questions this week. If I've forgotten anything, please draw my attention to it and I'll answer it as soon as I can. So Simplicity 8753, um, you have a couple different styles here. Um, we do the classic fit. Uh, my husband uh, doesn't really like tapered shirts. However, they do have the modern fit and slim fit. If your husband is thin and tall or whatever, you could do that. Um, just whatever your man that you're sewing for um, likes as far as the shirts. Now a good way to determine that without asking him, because this is the holiday season coming up, is to look in his closet and see what it is that he buys for himself. And if he buys a lot of slim fit shirts or likes them uh, tapered a bit, then you might want to go with either the modern. Um, my husband never buys anything slim cut, so um, I just went with the classic fit. And I really love the fact that it has all three of those options in one pattern. Um, it's very nice. This pattern was meant to be long sleeves. Um, I did shorten the sleeves for the ones I have made so far because it, they were summer shirts. So um, this time I'm actually going to make the long sleeve version. So, so I'll be um, leaving the whole sleeve uh, in the pattern. So what you'll need is your pattern. Now let's talk fabrics for a minute. The pattern envelope calls for chambray, cotton, poplin, seersucker, shirtings, 
Um, and of course you need to have extra fabric if you're gonna match a plaid or a stripe or something like that. Well, my husband picked this out at Zinc's and this is a cotton poly and it has just a tiny check in it, if you can see that. So um, I did allow just a tiny bit extra. They're very close together, so it won't really take very much extra to lay the shirt out on this. Good shirtings are somewhat difficult to find. Um, they do carry a good selection at Joann's um, online. Um, Fashion Fabrics Club and um, Fabric Mart both have quite a few as well. So I noticed that my husband um, had certain shirts that he really likes a lot more than others. And I noticed also that when I wash them, um, there are certain shirts that hang really nice right out. Like I pull them out of the dryer before they're dry and they're just wonderful. So um, I looked at the fabric content of those and it's cotton with tiny bit of polyester in it and that keeps it from being wrinkly like a 100% cotton would. So I choose the cotton poly for that reason. Now shirt tailor interfacing you want to get and that is um, just the best crisp collar. Um, it's made by Pellon. They sell it at Joann's. I'll put a link to some on Amazon below um, to make it easier for you. And it's not a real expensive interfacing and you don't need a whole lot. It's, the pattern calls for, let's see, the pattern calls for three quarters of a yard. I'm pretty sure that even a whole yard is like less than $7 or something like that. So it won't be real expensive to get the good interfacing. Um, you'll need it for the cuffs and the collar and the placket. Um, another thing you'll need to do is measure your man. And that, so, when it comes to measuring a man, so let's say you, your, your husband or son or whoever you're sewing for knows that you're gonna make him a shirt or knows that you're gonna make him something, then you can measure them. And here are the measurements you need. Okay, you need the neck circumference. And this would be like if he bought an 18 neck shirt, you would know that that's um, you know, close to the size for that. Right. So then you need a chest measurement you need a bicep measurement, just above the elbow, the wrist, waist measurement, hip measurement, and then you need the sleeve length. So what you, when you measure sleeve length, you don't want them to be straight like a soldier and you don't want it to be like this. You just want them to have his arm hang kind of loose and measure all along here, okay? Um, but those are the measurements you need for the shirt. There are others you can take for your man if you're gonna sew other things, pants and whatnot. But, um, and I honestly just keep all of my husband's measurements all the time. Um, if I notice that he's buying a different size or whatever, I'll, I'll just from time to time measure and see if anything has changed. Um, so that's the that same thing that I do for myself. Um, and then he really never thinks about it and he never really knows when I'm making him something. Since I have a sewing room, I can close the door and he doesn't see what's happening in here, <laughs> which is good, especially at Christmas time. So those are the basic things you're gonna need. You're, you're gonna need your paper scissors or a rotary cutter to cut your pattern apart. You're going to need thread that matches your fabric. You're going to need some buttons. Let's see how many buttons we're going to need. Uh, so you'll need 11 buttons. So you can um, choose your buttons for your fabric. Remember, they're not women, so they probably would want more of a classic button and not anything crazy. Um, I will probably just use white buttons on this, um, either the white or wooden buttons for this one. When it comes to buttons, a lot of times I'm a little unsure when it comes to men's shirts. So when I give it to them, I'll generally ask them, do you like the buttons? If you don't, I'll replace them with something you like. And he's never said, no, I don't like them. So, I, but you know, I sometimes just don't want it to stick out as mommy made this, you know, when a grown man goes to work, I don't want it to look like, you know, it's, I want it to look professional and crisp and all those good things. So um, I try to look at the ready to wear shirts and um, keep it somewhat the same because he's in a very professional environment. So 
Um, so basically that is what you're going to need. You'll also need your interfacing, um, your fabric, and like I said, buy a tiny bit more if you have anything that you need to match. Next week I'll show you some adjustments that you can make to it um, depending on um, your husband's measurements. Um, I did do a few on um, when I made this pattern for my husband, so um, I can show you that. There's one big thing with this uh, shirt pattern that I think needs to be changed and um, I can show you how I did that, but the pocket is extremely small and my husband kind of said it pens were sticking out too far in his pocket and it felt weird so but that was very easy to fix I just measured um, one of his favorite shirts uh, how big the pocket is so I would recommend if you're gonna put a pocket I guess the modern and slim fits don't have pockets but if you're making the classic shirt measure a pocket of one of his favorite shirts and, and make your own pocket pattern because it really, it was really tiny. And I thought so at the time. And then when he got it, he said, yeah, this is really small. So um, you might wanna just um, use that as a pattern piece. So next week we will cut it out and we'll lay it out, cut it out and um, prepare our pieces with interfacing and that kind of thing. And, we, and then we'll be ready to sew our shirt together. Um, I think you'll be surprised how easy um, the shirt is. It doesn't really take that much time. Um, probably the most difficult parts are the collar and the um, cuff vent, but they're not difficult by any means. So I don't think you'll have any problem whatsoever. And I will be here to answer your questions all along the way. So I hope you have some weekend plans this weekend. I um, am finishing up some Carolyn jammies. Um, that I'm making for um, a Minerva Craft blog. Um, for some reason, I keep, other things keep taking me away from most jammies. So I need to get them done. Um, they're Christmas jammies. I'll show you part of the shirt that's not done. This is great fabric from Minerva. Here's the pocket. This, these are Carolyn jammies. So um, the pants are done. I have a, nice little cuffs on the pants. Um, and oh, I love these. They have pockets. Look at here. They have pockets. So I'm real excited about these jammies. And I don't think I've had a pair of Christmas jammies since I was a little girl. So this will be fun. Um, get to do a fun photo shoot in them for Minerva. So my husband dug out some Christmas lights out of the um, basement so that I can have those for my photo shoot, which should be a lot of fun. All right, so have a wonderful weekend and happy sewing.